Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video, another Duel Links gameplay video. This time I'm going to be playing this Gladiator Beast deck that I just got King of Games with. This is my first actual season playing competitively on the ladder, and I is my first King of Games, obviously. And I played uh, Holy Guard GBs. Uh, I did a long, like, seven-hour live stream trying to get to King of Games from my Legend rank. Uh, in the span of seven hours, I got to my rank up game three times for King of Games, and then lost all three of them, and then went on losing streaks and went all the way back down to Legend 1 and Legend 2 uh, and had to fight my way back up and then after I ended that stream I kept playing Duel Links for another 3 hours so 10 hours total and of that time I got to my King of Games rank up game another 2 times I lost one of them and then finally the last time I actually finally got it and I was like good I can go to sleep now uh, but basically this is just a pretty standard GB deck uh, in what my mind standard would be uh, with a couple techie cards like Anti-Magic Arrows to let you play a little bit more offensively and Powerful Rebirth just to allow you to start doing some uh, some neat plays in terms of like what you do with your Econ takes. Like you can tribute a GB off and bring it back in the same battle phase to take a monster and Powerful Rebirth a GB back and then attack again. Uh, if things like your Mermillo die or if like both your Bestiaries for some reason die, you can Powerful Rebirth them back and then tag them back into your deck. It's just really neat. Uh, but I'm playing 8 GBs because I wanted the statistic chance of drawing them. I had a lot of games where, since I'm not playing a skill like Balance uh, or Restart, I would just not have a GB in my hand. Uh, so, like, I just I wanted a solid two-fifths of my deck to be GBs. Uh, but then Anti-Magic Arrows and Powerful Rebirth are just kind of the techie cards. But everything else is just kind of standard, so I won't waste much more time here. Let's just hop straight into some games, and uh, I'll let you guys judge how the deck performs for yourself. So, like I said, I, I played Duel Links for a legit 10-hour straight run trying to get from and the thing is i started my live stream i i played duel links in the day before that too and i'd gotten myself up to legend three but i played no games in legend three and i started my live stream <laughs> with uh with the idea of okay we're gonna go from legend three and we're gonna try to get king of games and then for seven hours i was just going back and forth between legend three legend one legend three legend one getting to my king of games rank up game all that sort of stuff uh, but this is the first time that I've been in King of Games because it's the first time that I've tried cool. to even play on the ladder. Um, so, okay, my opponent plays dual standby and is just passing. T uh, well, didn't pass. I started. I'm just going to set with no monsters uh, because if he's playing Cyber Angels, I don't want to lose my monster to uh, Dimakari. Or not Dimakari, to uh, Dakini. I've been playing this deck for way too long. If it has a D in its name, I'm going to call it Dimakari. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Are we playing a GB mirror, but you're playing dual standby for extra consistency? I mean, I could see that. I, I, I'm almost down for that. But if this is a GB mirror, I have a very lopsided advantage because I have two anti-magic arrows in my hand, and you can bet your ass one is being used right now. <laughs> uh, so I'll anti-magic arrows, and then I'll attack this. Uh, oh, a man-eater bug. How very strange. Well then, the anti-magic arrows was just straight up minus, because that's just a, an extra card that I burned. I just used two cards to deal with one, instead of... Because the idea of anti-magic arrows is that you do that exact same thing that I just did, but then you tag out Dimakari into Bestiari and pop a back row. What are you playing? Alright, well... I'll summon this. There's no monsters about, so I'm not afraid of either of these. Chain Destruction... There's no other cards in my deck with this name. Sorry, fam. Okay. Well, okay, that, that offsets the that offsets the minus that I just took. What an a weird Taya deck. I'm kind of confused. Uh, but at the same time, I, I kinda knew this was gonna be sort of the case that I'd be dealing with. Because uh, the Legend rank is a lot more competitive, at least from what I've been told from people that frequent duel links a lot more often than I do. Uh, because you have to try hard to get to King of Games. You have to physically try to get to King of Games. But then once you get to King of Games, you can't rank down from King of Games. Once you're in King of Games, you're there until the season resets. So people play a lot more, like, dumb things once they get there because they can freely do so. Like, you, what are they going to do? They're not going to lose ranking. They're just going to win and lose a couple of games. What the hell is that? A faint plan. Cannot attack face downs during this turn. I'm confused. Is this another man-eater bug? <laughs> okay. Well, Alright. Okay, well. Okay, then. How very strange. I guess we'll just go straight into the next one for that one. If, if, 
If, that, if that's what's happening, I guess we'll just go straight into the next one. I'll 100% take farming somebody for, like, dual-thon points and for boxes. Like, if if that's if that's the kind of nonsense we're going to be dealing with, I hope that's not the entirety of what I'm dealing with in King of Games rank, which I I'm, I mean, I know it's not. I've played around in this before, uh, before filming this video, and it, it's, like, semi-competent. Uh, it's, people are, people play semi-competently. People just play stupid decks, that's the problem. Okay, Bandit Keith. What skill could you be using? I'm going second against it. Dude. What deck are you playing and what skill could you be using? Alright. Okay, there's a delay. So he's playing Restart. And if he doesn't use Restart, then I don't have to worry about a skill for the rest of the game. Which is good. I'm going second. There's 7 GBs in my deck out of these 16 cards. That's the reason why I play 8 GBs, by the way. Is because, um, if you don't draw a GB in your first 4 cards, you have 8 GBs in your 16 card deck. So you have pretty high chances of drawing into, um, into a, uh, a usable, uh, card, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but let's say Normal summon this. See what we're dealing with. Oh, Floodgate Trapple. How interesting. Okay, well then I'll set this Econ as well. I was keeping it in my hand for the like off chance that it could be a mirror. Because some people do play Restart on Gladiator Beasts to try and get to a monster. Um, I just prefer to take the statistical approach of um, of just, you know, like I just said. Like, if you don't open a GB in your four monster, in your four cards, you have 16 left in deck and you have 8 GBs. So it's a 50-50 shot at drawing a monster. And those odds only increase as each turn goes by, and all of your cards are really good at getting you to your next turn. So, it's stuff like that. Just little marginal things. I am I play this game like a real Yu-Gi-Oh player, and it's very obvious when you find people that don't play actual Yu-Gi-Oh, and they just play it like it's a mobile game. I'm pretty sure I've said this before countless times, uh, but it's, it's very obvious when you get to these people, because they just don't know little tricks that I take advantage of. Um, and so it gives you a little bit of an advantage in those matchups. Mystic Box? Hmm. Okay. What are you giving me? What are you- which monster are you targeting of yours? Okay. I'm okay with that. You're you're playing the god deck, but <laughs> but <laughs> all I can just say all I can say is but um you're you're playing the god deck, but you're playing it not optimally, I'd assume. I don't know what the purpose is Mystic Box is for. Oh, wall of disruption. How neat. How kinky. How cute. Um, I'm okay with that. I don't take battle damage. I have holy guard. You just took a minus one to keep that move. You, you were taking a minus one either way. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, well. So, we'll just pass. I've got Curse of Anubis and two Econs set. I've got the Anti-Magic Arrows live as soon as I draw either another GB or make room. I can always just make room for the Anti-Magic Arrows by just Econ taking his other Raw's Disciple. Um, I just want to know what the set card is. It hasn't been flipped yet. So I want to know what it is. But it's probably something like 4 Star Ladybug of Doom. Okay, that's Powerful Rebirth. I actually want to make room for that. Uh, so I'm actually okay with Econ taking the the Raw's Disciple. Oh wait, I can't target his monsters? What? What do you mean? Target one face of monster you probably controls. Take control of it. What the hell? What what is what is Raw's Disciple's text? It, for what reason could I... Oh, cannot be tributed. I see. Alright, well that's fine. I'll still do this. I'll make room for the powerful rebirth. To bring back the bestiary. Uh, and then I can burn the other econ. I didn't actually register that that was a thing that was about to happen. I haven't seen a Raw's Disciple in so actual long. That's the only time when I really get got. Is when I get got by things that are not like regular common Yu-Gi-Oh knowledge. What is this person trying to do? Are they just trying to like deck me out? I don't know. They're they're not going to succeed at that. It's 100% not a plan that's going to succeed because I've now I now have a Mermillo. 
Um, and I'm going to go into battle phase. I'm going to attack this and see what it is. Because I, I don't take battle damage, so if it's something that's huge, I don't care. What do we have? Oh. A bubonic vermin. Why were you not flipping this on previous turns? And you didn't even activate it. How very strange. I can't special summon monsters because of the Raw's Disciple. So, hmm, I need to get rid of it. I see, that's his game plan. I see. Suddenly it all makes sense. He's just gonna leave this Raw's Disciple on the field. I see. I, it took a minute for me to register it, but then I just kept reading the card, and it it finally makes sense. Okay, you're going to end your turn? Alright. So I can't tribute it for Econ, so I don't have anything in my capability to... Uh, oh, so that's why he didn't special off this either, because he has a, a raw. Okay. I see. I don't have any cards in my deck that like negate this effect. But, I think it's fine. Because, like... I could just do an anti-magic arrows play. I can just suicide this. Yeah, that's how we deal with this. 100%. I don't take battle damage here. Massive morph? <laughs> Alright. Fair. <laughs> Fair shout. Um, I'm gonna still just... I'm not even gonna use the anti-magic arrows now. I'm gonna econ that to attack mode. I'm gonna suicide into it. And then I'm going to... This deck seems like it's bad. If, if we're just if we're just stating things that might just be obvious. Uh, I'll set this. And I'll... Enter battle phase. I'll suicide the raw into this raw. And it looks like it's going through. Good. And now I'll use this bestiary to attack over that raw. Because he gave it a wonderful boost for me. Don't know what the purpose of that one was. 1900, then attack for 8, and then uh, powerful rebirth, the bestiary engraved for game. Okay. I can understand the purpose of your deck. Give me a Raw's Disciple, and then I can't, you know, I can't econ tribute it, so I can't get it off the board, in theory. And then, um, uh, and then you, uh, you, uh, just keep, a, you keep the Raw on my field, and then I can't special summon, and then you just, I assume, deck me out? But... Seems like it, it's poor on the execution. I would like to get at least one real game against like an actual tier meta deck um, for this video, but I can understand why people in King of Games might not be playing that because if there's one thing that I really, if there's one reason why I really want to get King of Games in this season specifically is because because of the Bamboo Sword and Woodland Sprite decks and the Endemon decks, all the Bamboo Sword decks that are enabled um, as of right now, uh, the Ranked Ladder is very volatile because of just how much those things are around, just ruining people's days. Uh, so there's not really a proper tier list uh, that I've that I've been able to like understand. Like, there's not really much going on because like it's it's such a volatile format. And so I feel like getting King of Games in this format is very rewarding, uh, which is was another reason why I definitely wanted to get King of Games in this format before it reset. Because I mean, Woodland Sprite is only at three for literally another 24 hours. <laughs> okay, so we're playing a real deck. Good, Hazies. This is a meta deck. This is tiered. I'll fucks with this. Alright. The problem being that... Okay, this is either Beast Rising or Hazy Glory. I don't want to lose my Bestiari to a Soul Exchange. But at the same time... I think it's fine. So I'll summon this. Okay, so this is either Econ or something. Uh, so... It's either Econ, it gave him a response window, so it's a chainable. So it's either Econ, Mirror Wall, or it would be Beast Rising or Hazy Glory. This is one of those bad matchups to try and gauge that, because the two traps that the deck commonly plays um, are cards that are, can just be flipped randomly at any point. So trying to wait for the delay is, uh, is a big problem. Oh wow, really? I play against something real and my opponent just leaves. I'm so upset. That means that his set was probably Beast Rising. Because it wasn't an out to the best ERA attacking over Cerberus, and then his hand was absolute garbage. His hand was probably flooded with monsters like Canine Tor and um, Flame Tiger and uh, more Cerberuses or something like that. And he didn't have access to a Soul Exchange. That's, that's what I can gather from that. 
is that that set was just Beast Rising, which was dead. And he was going to lose the Cerberus to the best Yari. Uh, and then there was just nothing he was going to be able to really do about it. Okay. Well, I'll set Bestie, set Econ, uh, and see what we have to work with here. I kind of get heated whenever I see Yami Yugi that my opponent just doesn't activate a skill on because it means they're usually they're playing that Temple of the Mind's Eye deck and they're playing Destiny Draw so they can just get Lava Golem, um, which is really unfortunate. Yep, that's exactly what he's playing. All right. <laughs> okay. I see you, my man. All right, so what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to take that. I'm going to put him on this card not being Lava Golem. Because if it's Lava Golem, it's going to be a bad time for him. But at the same time, I have the out to the Lava Golem because he has this Sky Star Ray that's going to be coming back every turn. And I can just tribute um, for... Uh, for stuff. So I'm just going to set another monster, I'm going to set this, then I'm going to pass turn. If he doesn't have Lava Golem, and I draw another monster, then I just have game immediately, because I anti-magic arrows him, and then I just swing, swing, swing. Okay, he doesn't have Lava Golem. Good. I, I play this matchup very, very methodically, is how I, uh, is how I handle this one. Uh, yeah, sure. Sky Star Ray is fine. That's fine going away. Another monster. Good. Alright. So we're normal summoning this. And then we're just gonna flip these. If he floodgates me or does something like that, then I'll just make Nerokius. Because Nerokius is immune to like all these back row that they could be, which is like things like massive morph, uh, draining shield, enchanted javelins. Um, okay, so he's floodgating my Laquari. Whew, which means. I think I make Nerokius and swing, uh, and Nerokius is just one monster on my field, so he can't, uh, he can't, um, he can't, uh, Lava Golem me. Yeah, we'll do that. It's, it's not worth it to, uh, make Herc, because I've just got one monster, I've got one card in hand, and that card is, um, that card is the, uh, Anti-Magic Arrows. I'm okay with Nerokius getting, like, massive morphed. But, at the same time, it would kind of suck if he did. Or is he going to get floodgated? If he gets floodgated, that's fine as well. I'm surprised that my opponent would like, flip the floodgate on my monster. Oh, they're reading it. They have a chainable and they're reading the Nerokius. <laughs> Alright. Okay, yeah. Flipping Massive Morph right now. Okay, sure. I'm okay with that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end my turn and what I want, right, is very specific. I want to draw my other Econ because that would be really, really cool. Oh, and a Nabo White Rabbit. How very how very keen of you. Uh, so I'm going to Econ this to defense mode and I want to draw my other Econ <laughs> so that... Uh, so that I can turn it back to attack mode and then just attack over it. <laughs> um, so I will change this target's battle position. Uh, he's going to attack me with a Naba, which I'm okay with. I'll save the wall of disruption until I'm at life point, like, deficit that matters. But uh, this Sky Star Ray being in defense mode, if I draw Econ, it's a game. That's a Laquari. That kind of works. Because it doesn't put him in destiny draw range. But at the same time, I could hard lose to Lava Golem. But we might have to take that risk. <laughs> That's the risk we might have to take. Because if I hit him for 18, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, we'll enter battle phase. Uh, no. I'm going to attack with this. Just so this is off the board. Then I'll attack with this. It's either going to bait a trap or or not. Okay, Draining Shield. Hmm. Uh, I can tag this out. He doesn't have... He ha doesn't have Destiny Draw, so again, I'm just going to put him on Better Have Lava Golem. 
uh, essentially. So I'll summon this, and I'll summon Dimakari. So the Bestiari can pop the other back row, and then the uh, Dimakari will be a double attacker. So if he doesn't have Lava Golem, I have anti-magic errors for game next turn. This matchup is always incredibly touch and go. Oh, Windstorm. That almost does nothing. Why are you even playing that card? Ah, I guess it buys you a turn. Alright, so now I've got Wall of Disruption, so I just, I cannot get Lava Golems. Temple of the Mind's Eye. Good. Okay. And Abba White Rabbit. Okay. Hell yeah. Alright. So I might as well burn this. Right? Seems like a card that I should burn. Uh, I don't know what this card in his hand could be. Oh wait, that Temple of the Mind's Eye means that I can only do 3,000 this turn. That's actually a huge problem. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these all to attack position. Uh, and I'm going to attack with just the Laquari. And then tag out into Bestiari and pop the temple. Uh, because if I only hit him for a thousand, then he can't destiny draw. So, that's fine. Okay, so we'll hit this... To hit that. And then I, he's going to be summoning... He has to either Lava Golem me next turn or summon a Nava White Rabbit. So... The thing is, like, even if he drops Lava Golem, that's still game. No matter what monsters he drops it over. So I'm actually fine with getting Lava Golem at this specific point. Because... Okay, Sky Star Ray. Fine. Easy. Okay, no Temple of the Mind's Eye. Okay, good. Game is won. I hate these burn decks. You have to be so careful. You can't attack them for more than 2,000. Uh, you can't do, like, any, like, cheeky nonsense. Nothing. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is... Let's see, 25 plus 16 is 41. I'm going to attempt to play around Sphere Karibo because my opponent might be stupid. And I'm going to attack with the Esadari first. And if he Sphere Karibos it, then that's a game. So, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Uh, so we'll go into battle phase. Uh, no anti-magic arrows, unneeded. I'm going to try to attack with this. Because this is just like, like, he's got a delay. Yep, there's the Sphere Karibo. See, that's how you next level people. This Dimikari can attack twice. So all three of these, this is 16, 16, 16. It's exact game. It's 48. <laughs> See, you put the big monster out, like the Esadari, and you attack with it, and your opponent's like, Oh, that's the most damage. We'll turn that one to defense mode. But they don't realize that that Dimakari was tagged into by a GB effect. Thusly, they just... It, it, it's exact game. Like, it's it's game up to 4,800. If you summon another uh, Dimakari, it's 5,000 if you have another Quarry. It's uh, 47 if you had a Bestiari, and uh, Dimikari attacking twice plus Mermillo is exactly 4,000. Like, these are the numbers you have to work with. Oh, I hate playing against Burn, but this video is already long enough. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this little uh, Duel Links video. I plan on doing a few more live streams. Now that I'm at King of Games rank, I'm going to be focusing on building more different decks and testing things. I've got a couple of different decks that I want to play in King of Games as well, like the Hero Beat deck. Um... A bunch of different things, but I also will probably be doing some more dual links in little amounts on live streams, but my live streams will probably transition back over into being more of a regular Yu-Gi-Oh! focus. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, let me know. Leave a like, comment, something like that in the comments down below. Let me know what you're thinking. But otherwise, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, as I've already said. Links is always in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel, Patreon is the best way to do so, as usual. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And as usual, guys... Take care. I'll see you in the next video. But now that the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertsen, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else supporting in the lower tiers. You guys help make what I'm doing here continue to be possible. You have my eternal gratitude, as always, and you're forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.